Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. Let's review. We've had some code that's challenging the unit test, has no unit test. Now we are gonna unleash Holy Fury and refactor it. What they don't tell you about unit testing is that if you want a unit test, you gotta write testable code. Code is untestable. You have to do the due diligence to test it first to verify the initial state, then start cracking some eggs. We're gonna start unwinding this thing through a process called refactoring, where you take existing working code and improve upon it. The safest way to do that is with unit tests and a bunch of them. We've created a bunch, we've got a reasonable amount at this point. Know if we actually broke it and know if we're actually improving it. So let's start refactoring. The best offense is an offense. Everyone calls it the best defense but that's not how you win, you attack. Speaking of attack, we are gonna refactor the attack. We've got enough unit tests down here that pass to determine the initial state. The attack looks like a ripe target because it does so much. It's very difficult to replace a lot of these things because they're actually baked into the function. The only thing we can configure on how this thing works is this. Everything else is functions that are defined here. So this function itself is really hard to test. Let's tackle the core problem of that, and that's roll dice. Roll dice, the crux of this entire system, is random and it causes all kinds of havoc. What if we can make that not random? Let's do that right now. We're gonna make a roll dice function. We're gonna copy the exact same functionality that the other one does, but we're gonna add one trick and that's this random number function at the end. We're gonna default it to a random number function. Basically match the same function signature. You can still type in 1d20 if you want to. This third parameter, which is optional, has a default of get random number. And all that is for that is is math.random. And you're probably asking, why did I make this a function when this is a function? Well, there's two reasons. First, this is one variable that we can pass in to other functions, also known as a higher order function. But more importantly, we can abstract away how it actually works internally, given that this is not very random. If you're a game developer, you know that there's a lot of ways to make things more random. More importantly for us though, we just care that the function is configurable to not be random, so we can test it. Now we've got two functions, let's export them both. Scroll to the bottom. And we'll stop doing this whole single line thing. It's gotten to the point where we're gonna add more and more and more and more, a big list of these things. So let's start formatting it to deal with that. So roll dice and get random number. We've got two new functions. Let's test the random number first, just to make sure that he does in fact turn a random number. It's a really simple function. All we care about is that it gives us a finite number. We don't really care about samples or any of that. We just care that it's finite, should be true, here that we imported it up top, which we didn't, let's do that real quick before we even attempt to run it, let's wrap that, and it should return a finite number, describe is just for printing, it is the actual unit to place, there we go. Rerun our tests. We now have a new one, get random number, it should work. So we got a brand new function with a brand new unit test on it. We're not gonna do TDD, we're just gonna write it as we go. Let's do a new one for the roll dice. And just put a basic test for now. We're gonna have one more after this in a second. But we'll just do the basic should return a finite number. Get the result, call roll dice with 1d20. Notice the third parameter is optional. See, notice the question mark. You don't have to do that third parameter if you don't want to. If you don't, it's gonna to default to that random function we already have, which is right here, it gets a random number. Again, we're just concerned that it's a finite number. So is finite. Rerun our test. We should see our new roll dice at the bottom here with the return, it's also true. Now, how do we make this not random? Well, we switch to a number that never generates a random number. And if you multiply one number by another one and you want to guarantee the same result each time, what do you do? And you get not a random number. You multiply it by, drum roll, one. Even an art student knows this. Woohoo! If I can figure this out, so can y'all. Go to the bottom. Export get not a random number. Not the best English, but then again, I am Jesse Warden. Known quantity. Describe. It should return a one. The result of this guy, result should equal one. We got that, let's rerun our unit tests. And we now have get random number should equal one, fantastic.
So now that we have a way to generate randomness up here and not randomness, let's add it. Now, if you're curious again about the math, 20 times one is 20. And in the rule dice function at the very top, if we have one times 20, we're always gonna get back 20 if we do one. So let's add a new roll dice unit test that say should not be a random number if we use one. So we're gonna make use of that optional third parameter now and pass in a way to generate our own random numbers. But get this, they're not gonna be random. It's gonna be the same each time and it's gonna be a one to guarantee always the same results. Yet not a random number. Notice we passed the function, not actually calling it, right? And the result of that, we're actually passing the function itself as a variable, so it's a higher order function. The result should equal, what's 20 times one? That's right, 20. So now if we generate it and run our unit tests, we have two for the roll dice. We now have a way to get roll dice to never generate a random number. And we can start tackling the attack function because we can guarantee the output of those results since it's never random. Same inputs, same outputs. That is how you refactor untestable code by creating testable code, slowly mirroring the same API. With a bunch of unit tests, confirm your initial state and provide a safe environment alongside the existing unit tests you've already have to make sure you're not breaking anything.